Hello, my lovelies. I hope you're having a lovely day. Happy Sunday, May 7th, 2023. Before we get into our podcast topic, I'm going to tell you the song of choice for my intro, which is by Buffalo Springfield for what it's worth from 1967. And as you know, songs from the 60s and 70s have been, uh, were very political. Uh, and it was a political freedom of speech by music. And uh, that song, for what it's worth, has been re-recorded throughout the decades. So we all know that from, you know, there's an 80s version, there's a rap version, beautifully made, um, a rock version of it. There was in the movies, there's been great remakes. And uh, that's what why I chose this song, because I want to talk about how music and acting is an art form. And I know we've all been a little upset about Cleopatra. I was upset as well uh, due to the fact Cleopatra was a Macedonian Greek. Uh, she is basically full of incest, the family, or we call it Sweet Home Alabama. And uh, she was not black. You know, she's painted in the porcelain color on a painting somewhere, a cave painting or somewhat. I don't know if it's cave, but on a wall. But she was Macedonian Greek. She would have had olive skin or light olive skin, just to be clear on that. And she had probably reddish brown hair, like auburn hair. That's what she's been painted. And she has a very Greek nose. So um, if it was a, if it was really a documentary, they would have followed as close as possible for an actress. Maybe got someone who's Egyptian or maybe someone who was Macedonian Greek. And uh, But if they're just making a fictional movie, I don't care if Cleopatra was uh, an alien from Mars because that's creative form, it's art. But we're living in this politically correct society, this everyone's butthurt society, everyone is you know, worried about racism, even though we haven't really been racist. We've been working so hard to get away from that. But because the whole voting aspect of it, and as you know, that to when you vote for your president or senator or congressperson, they will do whatever they can to get votes. And the Democrats are very good at bringing racism to light. Um, look at Biden. Biden's our U.S. president. And he was one of the most racist people that was in politics, maybe from the area he's from. I mean, he became a senator during Nixon era, especially uh, during Watergate. And I bet he dipped his uh, toes into Watergate, but nobody's looking into that. And yet, during the Clinton administration, when the whole Michael Lewinsky stuff came out, you know, the uh, liaison affair, the media had so much fun um, talking about that instead of what was really going on behind closed doors. That's what media does. They take negativity and turn it into humor. Jay Leno, nighttime talk show host, really was so bad about the whole Clinton, the Michael Lewinsky affair. And, you know, late night talk shows today are making fun of Tucker Carlson and Trump and whoever is the, the main headline. They try to be like Jay Leno. No one can replace Jay Leno. And I was not, was not a big fan of Jay, but for you trying to be a late night talk show host like Jay Leno, you're not going to fail, succeed. Be yourself and maybe people will like you better. So, That's why I'm bringing this up today, Uh, because actor Richard Dreyfuss had slammed the woke Hollywood inclusion standards, quoting, they make me vomit. And those who don't know who Richard Dreyfuss is, which you probably do know, he was in uh, movies such as What About Bob, Jaws, Mr. Holland's Opus, lovely movie, um, Closer Encounters of the Third Kind, and many more. He made that remark and many others on the PBS firing line with Margaret Hoover, After discussing at length a variety of issues related to the decline of civics education in the U.S. And I'm going to play a clip for you, what he had said, and uh, we'll discuss afterwards my thoughts. Starting in 2024, films will be required to meet new inclusion standards um, to be eligible for the Academy Awards for Best Picture they'll have to have a certain percentage of actors or crew from underrepresented racial and ethnic groups. What do you think of these new inclusion standards for films? They make me vomit. Why? Because this is an art form. It's also a a form of commerce and it makes money, but it's an art. And 
no one should be telling me as an artist that I have to give in to the latest, most current idea of what morality is. And what are we risking? Are we really risking hurting people's feelings? You can't legislate that. And you have to let life be life. And I'm sorry, I don't think that there's a minority or a majority in the country that has to be catered to like that. Yeah. You know, Laurence Olivier mm. was the last white actor to play Othello. And he did it in 1965. And he did it in blackface. And he played a black man brilliantly. Am I being told that I will never have a chance to play a black man? Is someone else being told that if they're not Jewish, they shouldn't play the Merchant of Venice? Mm -hmm. Are we crazy? Do we not know that art is art? This is so patronizing. It's so, it's so thoughtless and, and, and treating people like children. Do you think there's a difference between... And so do you understand what he's saying? And I know that I read on the comments on Twitter, oh, he said something else during the Trump administration, the negative things about Trump, and he's very liberalized. I can't believe he's saying this. And, and then you have the liberals going on uh, social media stating, well, too many white people have played blackface. But we don't go into the fact that there are many black people who played Native Americans, black people who have played... Uh, well, Queen Catherine, the recent one, a black, beautiful black woman, black actress, and she wasn't black. She had African genes, perhaps, but it was so far down the line, she was mostly white at that point. Uh, Anne Boylan, I believe there was a lovely black actress who played her. So are we white, are we black washing or whitewashing or whatever it's called? Yes, we are, because we have become reversal on everything. See, the whole point of civil rights movement was to get everyone together, except for the rich people. Do you got to remember the, when, Society was divided by race and up to the civil rights era. You had the, the African-American communities, the white communities, the Italians, the Jewish, etc. And I can't remember, there was an African-American uh, rich man who stated, again, I don't remember the exact quotes along the lines. I'm sure if you Google it, you'll find out who stated that we should stay segregated. Why? What was the point of that? But, you know, you see that, like, there are schools, that's, and I have seen schools that's only for African-American culture, like private high schools and, and private, and even private uh, colleges and universities. And there's nothing wrong with that because there's history to that. But when you think about it, you start questioning, why are we still doing segregation even in the schools? And when you see on Twitter, you have people going, why people should give up their paycheck to African-Americans? Why? I'm not rich. And you have more money than I do. I'm not bothering you. You're not bothering me. Just let it go. Get off of social media, for goodness sake gracious. But that's the world we're turning into. And it's very unfortunate. But Richard Dreyfus is a thousand percent accurate. And he's stating what almost everyone out there who's not so blindsided with common sense, a lack of common sense, I should say, for that matter. But I think the same way. We have come so butthurt with everything. And so I wanted to give you a take about Laurence Olivier on the uh, film um, on Othello, when he played Othello, which, as you know, it's a Shakespearean uh, play that became a film and has been you know, recorded over the years. But he wrote about it in his biography uh, in, I believe it was, yes, in the 1980s and called um, from Laurence Olivier's Confession of an Actor. 1982, and also same act. He also wrote a book called Unacting in 1987. And this man was a brilliant actor. Um, you have to remember, actors up until really the mid 90s were really good. They actually had to act. They had schools for acting. There's still there's still schools today, but people today they, it doesn't take much to act. I mean, I think acting is better on TikTok for personal acting than getting paid to do a role. And these big Hollywood movies. And you watch stuff on Netflix. You're like, okay, this one's brilliant. The other one, why do they even bother put, endorsing this film? It's horrible. But do you ever notice that? Like, it, it's just, there's not really much talent anymore. Anyone could be a singer. Anyone could be an actor. Just take some auto-tune and now you're a famous singer. 
And there's so many apps for that. So anyways, um, a Lord's Olivier's take is I feel like it's important to distinguish between dark makeup and blackface while the two terms have largely merged into critical discourse today and for good reason. They would have been understood as separate phenomena at the time. Yes, there was a difference. And we kind of forget about that because history is being distorted in so much and, and it's so stupid how distorted it is. And before I get into Lawrence Olivier, a continuation of what difference the define on between blackface and dark makeup, it's a simple term. There are definitions at that time. Um, you know, one thing that's been ag- agitating to me is, and I think a lot of people talking about reparations and, oh, so many black Africans were, you know, slaves to the whites. And that's not true. And I remember reading this lovely newspaper article in the 1960s. I was looking, I was researching actually for uh, a book I was working on. And, um, and anyways, in the paper, it talked about, and it was right around the civil rights. And it was written, the article was written by an African-American fellow in the South. And he uh, talked about why we're not teaching proper history, especially about the African-American culture. And it was this, and it was a list. And this, and this was a repeat article that went on for every 10 years, all the way up to the early 1900s. And each of these journalists were African-American. But we don't talk about this today, do we? No, we don't. And it was about the fact there was 1% of white people were slave owners because majority of whites in the South were dirt poor. And the people who owned slaves were mostly African-Americans. And so today's history say, oh, that's not right. Oh, no, no, no. But it is, that is accurate. And I quoted that to somebody one time and, oh, I got, oh, they, they argued with me and called me all these names. Like, how dare I say the truth? But that's the problem is you give people facts. People don't want to hear facts or the, at least the, the far left. They want to hear what makes them happy, what agrees to them. So, because it, all of a sudden you're saying, wait a minute, you're saying my ancestors possibly could have been slaves? Yes, they could have been. I know for a fact in my family, we were Native American Caucasian mixed coming from Barbados. They came to Virginia in 1651. And they looked, they were dark because they were a mixed race. And at that time in the 1600s, you go to Virginia, if you looked, and it wasn't African, it was Native American. And because he looked more Native American and spoke several languages, because th- that was normal back then, um, he had two choices. He'd have to either go to the tribal people, which he would not have been accepted because he was mixed. The Native Americans would not accept mixed people. Or he'd have to wear a star on his uh, shirt, okay? And it was a golden star I was reading in the old court documents from the 1600s. Well, of course you're not going to do that because he couldn't really own land. Well, technically he could have if he had money. But he wasn't. He was a pirate. On top of that, a lot of people in Barbados and the islands, you know, parts of the Caribbean, were actually were pirates. Interesting tidbit on history there. And um, and actually did have actual pirates in my family. I found that out in my research. So instead, that, that ancestor decided to go to North Carolina. Well, it was the Carolinas at that point. It wasn't North or South. And at that point, Carolina said, we don't care what race you are. As long as you can purchase land, we're cool with that. And so he didn't have to wear the star. And eventually, uh, the family became Quakers, except there's no actual document approving they're Quakers, but they were living on the Quaker area. And Quakers were notoriously known to have slaves in that part of North Carolina, which eventually would become North Carolina. Permiqua, as I believe it's called. And uh, But the thing is, they had slaves, but they were tr- they were teaching them. And most of the slaves were Native American. When you get towards the Civil War era, there was obviously more Africans mixed in. But at that time... Most of the people in in 13 original colonies were not Caucasian. They were not African. They were mixed. So we already had most of America was mixed race by, uh, the, uh, by the Revolutionary War. But see, we don't learn that. We don't learn the, the actual history facts. We don't learn the truth because Hollywood has whitewash or blackwash, depending what, or just uh, one race wash. Or t- we actually had two race, if you think about it, because we only focus on black and white. We forget we had Asians living in the 13 original colonies. We had uh, Africans who were landowners in the 13 original colonies. See, the bottom line is, if you've got money, nobody cares what race you are. And that, my friends, is the real truth of history. Because you look today, if you have money, money makes the world go round. You get invited to lots of glamorous things, go to the Met, get your photograph taken. But when you uh, don't have the money, people turn their nose up at you and walk the way. They don't care. 
because again, money makes the world go round. So we forget about this part in history. We only want to hear about we're racist. No, we're not. Are there racist people out there? Absolutely. But the world is not black and white. Moving forward. Blackface refers to a specific type of makeup that originated in minstrel shows and was designed to lampoon stereotypical features of African Americans. This is the makeup of people such as Al Jolson, Amos and Andy, and so forth. Blackface makeup left a large white area around the mouth to signal oversized lips and again a nod to racist stereotypes. Blackface performers usually also included costuming that was exaggerated and very disgusting stereotyped. Large bow ties, over large suit collars, and so forth. Voice and movement were likewise altered to lampoon African-American stereotypes. And by the way, back in the day when blackface was a thing, unfortunately it was, it's disgusting, and you know, it, 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 it was wrong, but a lot of Africans also did blackface. And there's was, there was a bunch of articles I read in the early 1900s, and there was photographs. These were famous actors in the early 1900s. And they were tap dancing, but yes, they did that. Um, we don't learn about this stuff. It's, I, I read a lot of newspapers.com, so it's where I've been educating myself. Um, as for Oliver, in his mind, in the minds of those directly around him, this what he did for Orthello wasn't considered blackface in a ministry Min, ministry sense. I cannot say that word right. In a um, in a blackface sense, it was made. It was him made up to be African. His attention was to play Othello, not to lampoon or stand up. In both of his of Lawrence Olivier's, Olivier's autobiographies, he discusses the process of the production and film to greater or lesser degree, and he does not ever hint any agenda other than dis- disappearing entirely into the character. As for the civil rights movement in the United States, the post-colonial critical race theory around the world advanced, most began to see this as a distinction without a difference. Since the actor donning up makeup like Olivier's is still assuming a cultural background, representative burden and personal history, that cannot be learned in rehearsal. Furthermore, the casting of a white man in a role like Othello further decrease, decreases the number of available roles of actors of color. So, in sum, to sum it all up, uh, in Olivier's cultural and historical context, this wasn't blackface, nor was it disrespectful. We have reason to see it as such now, but he wasn't working from the same operating assumptions. And here's a kicker about Othello. Othello wasn't African. Othello was actually Moorish, uh, a Moor, either Spain or North African. And uh, the great thing about Shakespeare, what I loved about Shakespeare, he never identified the birthplace in the play. Uh, to quote hi- history, in Shakespeare's time, Moors would be from Africa, like I said earlier, uh, southern Spain, but they also could be from the Middle East. And, and, the, and the Moors are such beautiful people. And um, I also want to point out, in 1998, a Ghanan or is British Ghanan actor named Hugh, and I apologize for butchering his name, Hugh Quarshi, said in a lecture 98 that of all parts in the canon, perhaps Othello is the one which should most definitely not be played by a black actor. And you're thinking, oh, Salty, what, what is he talking about? Well, this guy's first off is African. He's from Ghana, British you know, actor, British Ghanaian actor. But he wasn't saying that no black performer should ever play Othello, rather than that black performers should also think long and hard without doing battle, not just with a play. But the contest from which it springs, only by black actors playing a role, he says, we can address some of the racist traditions and assumptions that the play is based on. So in a nutshell, there's so many different arguments what well, that can be said. Um, would Lawrence Olivier today have done the acting the way he did for Othello, put on the dark makeup? Probably not. And uh, But remember, this was the 60s, and this was the time that 
actors, when they were told they had to do a role, like Fred Astaire, he did put on blackface. I do remember that. You know, Fred Astaire is a gifted dancer, an actor and singer. On the, especially his tap dancing is phenomenal. But he was, there's a song, oh, I cannot remember. And it's on, you can get it on YouTube. And he puts a blackface on and it's a tribute to a friend of his who also was an African-American tap dancer. And again, the name's lost in my head at the moment. Uh, but I knew his uh, tap dancing techniques. I knew a Sarah Scott used to tap dance as a kid. So these are things we learned in tap dancing in dance school. And so, um, and the man was respected. He had a big house in, in Hollywood. He was respected as an actor, regardless of the race. But the point is that the, uh, the African-American tap dancer, I cannot remember his name. And there was a guy that was even better than that guy who did, is not as famous as the other guy. And, uh, but yeah, if you look him up, you'll find out the name. So with that said, Fred Astaire did not want to put that on, but the problem with, it wasn't the producers. It was the people giving money for each picture, the films. And they were saying, you do this or you will not have a job. Well, if they said no, and they said, well, I'm not doing it. You get fired. And not only that, you lose your contract and you will not work in in the industry again. That was a phrase that's quite common. And it's, it is incredibly unfortunate that they didn't, the actors really did not have a power to say anything. But they say later on, you know, that was the biggest regret. So always remember that. Uh, Judy Garland's another one that had to put blackface for Sweet Low, Sweet Cherry Eye. Beautiful song. But she had put blackface on and she regretted that role. There's a difference. Othello was more of artistic freedom. Um, now reverse it. White Chicks. You all know that movie. I love that movie. But you have African-American actors dressing as white people, but not only putting white face on or white, well, uh, wasn't white face. It was really all white color on their whole body, but also stereotyping women. So th- they were stereotyping everything as possible. How come we don't talk about white chicks? I love that movie, White Chicks. It's brilliantly done, brilliantly, a brilliant acting, right? I wish they would make a sequel. But we're so butthurt. We don't want to talk about the elephant in the room of that. We're so butthurt about Othello by Lawrence Olivier. And and regardless of what race you are, you can say he did a brilliant job. I mean, you can watch it on YouTube. I was watching a little bit earlier today because I remember seeing it on television when I was a kid. And I was listening and I said, oh my gosh, he not only just grasped the character so well, he made Shakespeare interesting. If I watch uh, Leonardo DiCaprio's version of Romeo and Juliet with Claire Danes, why they did a great job acting, it's probably one of the worst films I've ever seen for Shakespeare. Don't modernize it. When they modernize Shakespeare, it just sounds so, I'm bored. You know, the original Romeo and Juliet, the 70s version of it was a lot better. Actually, I can play that song. I hear the song in my head now on the guitar. Such a lovely little melody. So my question is, when is the world going to stop with this whole butt hurt thing and just move on with life? The problem is we can't because we have social media. And social media is a way you can express yourself. The unfortunate way when you express yourself it's, it's the agenda is really for the left side, not for the middle side or the conservative. All right, my lovies, have a lovely day. Goodbye.